like if you know that when you wake up tomorrow, it's going to be fire after fire after fire mm-hmm. to put out, situation after situation to deal with, and you and you just expect it. It's mm-hmm. almost like to you, it's just like it's just okay. Friday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just it's just a Friday. It's Saturday. And here's and here's the things Sunday. I'm going to have to do. Um, but it does take a, a unique individual to be able to handle that. And I don't think it's something that people... It's not a better individual. No. Though. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 61. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. I hear. That is right. So, Episode 61, thank you for joining us. We're gonna play a video real quick, and it's a video that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk put out yesterday, I believe, and uh, watched it last night, and man, it was super, super impactful. Sent it to Joseph, and um, wanted to show it to you guys, and wanted to have that be kind of the framework of the discussion for this uh, short podcast today. So we're gonna start off with showing that video right now. And this is for all of you that wanna be at the top. Listen, when you're an entrepreneur, it's stressful, it's lonely. It is. Like everything is on me, right? Like everything that's broken at VaynerMedia, my fault. <sighs> Fuck! The ones who are successful have this gutter, dirt, work ethic about them. It's really almost lowly. It's like you have, it's like you have the, the, the demeanor of a king and queen, and you have king and queen, you know, values, but you have to work like a fucking peasant especially in this fucking industry. You know how many people have committed suicide in the tech startup community in the last five years and there's not a peep about it? Entrepreneurship is on the pedestal and everybody thinks it's easy. It's on you, there's no blaming anybody. If this wins, you. If this loses, you. That's lonely as fuck. I have pain, there's always problems. When I'm in pain, I go to sleep for five minutes and I wake up the next day and I kiss the world. When you're the CEO, when you're the founder, every single thing that happens in this company that's wrong is my fault. Do you know how tough it is when you have nobody else to blame? You know how much fun it is for you to blame the person that's above you? Oh, it's iHeartRadio's fault. Oh, it's, it's Pittman's fault. It's my boss's fault. That's fun. It's very tough to be at the top of something, even when it's going great. It is lonely at the top. It's only my responsibility. It's only my singular responsibility. At the end of the day, the buck stops with me and I have to, with every ounce of my soul, try to deploy my North Star to my employees. It's fun and I love this space the most. I loved it long before athletes and celebrities and rappers wanted to be entrepreneurs. It was my destiny. It was who I was, it was how I was wired, it was the only thing I knew. My entire life is taking care of crap, putting out fires. 24-7, 365, my whole life is this is a problem. Fix this and guess what? When you're the last line of defense, there's no blaming your boss. Every day's hard. And that's the best fucking part of it. I'm gonna always capitalize on that, you know? And I believe that it's time, like, all these greats are dying now, like, we need, we need new greats, we need new people that we can look up to. And um, I don't have a problem being one of those people. All right. Start her off? No. So, uh, <laughs> that was a little switcheroo. So, this is, uh, I think it's a super important topic. And as I watch this, it's, I don't think people, I don't think people truly grasp this idea of, you know, you can post the word entrepreneur on your Instagram profile um, and all of a sudden you are one. But I don't think people really grasp the responsibility and the difficulty and just as the 
the title Lonely at the Top, the, the, the real, real, real side of it. And I say that from, coming from a place that I don't understand it um, to, a, to a large degree, um, how, how to even process all those things. But I think that's the cool thing about having myself and Joseph on this podcast is that he does because he's in it um, every single day. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for that. And I don't know if it's something that I could handle, uh, quite frankly. I mean, obviously, when you're thrown into situations you that you have to be able to handle it, you can rise uh, to the occasion. But um, I don't think everyone's born and equipped to be able to do that. Um, I don't think it's everybody's role. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, man, watching that, it it, it was like permission mm -hmm. for me to be like, oh. That almost made me feel okay, feel normal. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times. All right, so I knew I was different. Mm -hmm. Like as a kid, I remember thinking I'm going to be this and this and this and this. Yeah. And so I literally think that it is, it's something that you're born with, like that, mm -hmm. that drive to do that. Had I known as a kid the mental anguish I would go through, mm -hmm. I think I may have chosen a different path. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like when he was talking about suicide, man, I've thought about that. Mm -hmm. I had thought it more than once yeah. a day for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have, I have, I have gone and thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? All these people are dependent on me, mm -hmm. and and this whole this whole ship is going down. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a lot of responsibility and people go, well, you make the most money, you can handle it or whatever, or you make, you do this or you do that. But it wasn't always that way. Yeah. Like I had people dependent on me and we weren't making it. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't doing well. Um, but he's right. And, and I think he didn't talk about it enough there, but I got to a place to where I was like, man, I love me. I'm okay with this. I was built to and equipped to handle this stuff. And yeah, it sucks sometimes, mm -hmm. but but that part, it was almost like I fell in love with that space that I could be in and chaos. operate in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chaos space. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I have to be careful because I'll create that on purpose. Yeah. I'll create chaos on purpose when I don't need to. Mm -hmm. um, and because I need a challenge or I need that, I need everything spinning out of control for me to take and steer it forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a, it's kind of a, it's uh it's weird. It's weird. Well, it's almost like what he was saying that it's, it's, it's difficult being at the top when things are good. It sucks. Like it still not, sucks. It's not just a when lot, things yeah. are bad, but I think part of that probably comes into play when you, with what you're talking about is, is having to create those scenarios. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think a lot of that is almost, it's like, comes down to treating life and treating day to day like as a game. Mm -hmm. Like if you know that when you wake up tomorrow, it's going to be fire after fire after fire mm -hmm. to put out, situation after situation to deal with, and you and you just expect it. It's mm -hmm. almost like to you, it's just like it's just okay. Friday. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's just it's just a Friday. It's Saturday. And here's the, and here's the things I'm going to have to do. Um, but it does take a. a unique individual to be able to handle that. And I don't think it's something that people... It's not a better individual, though. No. Like, like no. I, look at, I look at the different roles that we have in our company, mm -hmm. and we've got, we've got people like in the right seat. Yeah. And we're handling things right. And, and, and if, I was, if I was... We say number two man, number three man, but it's not. It's just a different mm -hmm. role. It's not like there's a number one guy yeah. and this role over here is less important because mm -hmm. this... This CEO or this founder or what he was talking about, they're just, if if they think they're a leader and they turn around and ain't nobody there, they're just out for a fucking walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they're sure. not leading anybody anywhere. So they can they can think they are whoever they are. But if they turn around and those people and they've got a solid team around them, that's that's they've people have taken the right seat on the bus mm -hmm. and that organization is going somewhere and they'll be able to weather the storms that they come into because everybody's goes into those storms. And I think there's, there's a lot of people out there that have these entrepreneurial tendencies. Sure. Sure. And well, they fall in love with the glamor side. Yeah. Of it. Well, they're not, just, and the, they're not prepared when all of a sudden life hits and all of a sudden those first struggles and those first 
situations, those first problems, just slap them in the face. And they're mm-hmm. like, whoa, 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 wait a second. This isn't what I signed up for. Um, what? You mean I've got to make payroll every two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah or lawsuits and different, like, different things that you're just <laughs> yeah. going to deal with. And, and not, like you said, not having anybody to blame it on. Yeah. Um, and having no one else. It's not just not having anybody to blame it on. I think the deeper issue is not having anyone to... Shoulder it. Not, not even ha- just not having anyone that else that really understands what you're going through, like to a, de- to a degree. It's just like and that's what I got out of the just, video. It's not just that I want someone that I can blame it on because if if you're watching this podcast, you're probably either there or you're on your way there to not playing the, not blame, playing the blame game. game. But it's just having someone that you can talk to that understands what you're going through. I think that's the big thing. And that if you are the person at the top, you don't have that because you, if you're talking to someone that quote unquote is underneath you in the hierarchy of a company or even laterally within another company, you have to put on this facade like I'm handling it, I'm shouldering this, I'm championing, championing, championing this like championing is that right yeah championing whatever it is today <laughs> but <laughs> but you like you have to put on this this facade that like i'm handling it because you don't want to show weakness right but you also want to show this human element of the mm-hmm. fact that like it's real life um yeah. and that these struggles are real and so i think that's what people don't really understand it's not just not being able to blame someone it's just not being able to have someone that truly gets it yep. you know that truly gets it and that's yeah like that's after tough. i watched that video you know what i did mm-hmm. i went Whew. yeah i just took a deep breath i was like well he gets it and yeah. he gets it you know but and, and i think gary i mean a lot of people watch gary i'm one of them and gary's an alien yeah yeah so i mean a lot of the stuff that he talks about is just it's not normal. Right. And the way he looks at things, like enjoy, like genuinely enjoying the losses, like yeah. that's not everybody. Like no, that's, no. A, that's a unique individual. Um, but it's it's such an important topic. When he talks about like suicide within companies, like that's why it's happening. It's those people that have gone through life, haven't really had all that many obstacles, then all of a sudden they become a entrepreneur, a business owner, they get smacked by the market or by this issue, this struggle, and they're like, holy crap, for the first time, I'm not I'm not Superman or Superwoman yeah. and can't handle that stress. Yep. But now they've now they've gotten to a point where they're like, Oh crap, I've raised Ten million dollars to start this company now and I realized I'm actually people. not an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> and now what do you I do? Owe all these people money. Now I've got these lawsuits kicking in. I've got this and mm-hmm. and I've got boom, There's boom, no boom, 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 boom. All these employees. They still want to get paid. They don't yeah. care that you're getting sued. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's it can be it can compile and compound. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's it's fascinating. So as you're, because I know you're going through a lot of transformation in your life and the way it, your perspective, the way you're seeing things, and the way you're allocating your time. What are what is some of that looking like as far as your mindset of being able to? You know, we make fun of the word balance, but it's being able to prioritize sure certain things. So what's that looking like now for you? Yeah, we've always made fun of that balance because you and I both believe that some. That's just psycho babble for somebody mm-hmm. to be lazy. Yeah. Traditionally, that's how it's been yeah. used. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to being a good dad, being a good husband, being a good friend, being a good, being good to yourself, um, your health, mm-hmm. you need to prioritize these things. They have to be prioritized. Um, you can't put that stuff on the back burner or and trade it all for your business because you'll just have a business and you'll be sick and die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I promise you, I don't want to be sick when I'm 50 going, shit, I made a bunch of money and die at 51. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's, that's ridiculous. And so my perspective has changed a lot on that in that I take the same hustle that we take to business and mm-hmm. I take that to, to being a dad. I mean, I just yeah. got back from Ireland mm-hmm. with my oldest daughter. She's 14. We had an unbelievable trip. Yeah. There's so much one-on-one time. And you know what? We didn't have to go to Ireland. Mm-hmm. Sure. We could have stayed We could have stayed here in South yeah. Carolina going to Cowpens and looked at the Battle of Cowpens. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. The, the, But that one-on-one time where mm-hmm. we could talk and we could talk through things and I mean, it was fun. I was talking with her. The spiritual conversations mm-hmm. that we had were unbelievable. Yeah, awesome. And uh, she's such a beautiful person. But 
that just continues to solidify in my mind that you need to go all in mm-hmm. on your list of priorities. If you don't care about your health yeah. and you want to die quick, then mm-hmm. just make that at the bottom of the list, right? Sure. Put, put health at the bottom. If you want to end up on a third and fourth and fifth marriage, mm-hmm. then just take and put time with Maitland at the bottom of the list, yeah. right? Like, don't do it. And and you'll get it. You'll know exactly mm-hmm. what's coming. Like oh, yeah. people need to know that if you're not if you're not hustling on that, like you're hustling on, you know, we sell insurance. So if you're if you don't take that same hustle to being a dad to Arden, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> but I think a lot of people don't don't look at that in the same way. Like they don't look at like that the mindset that it takes to hit to set and then hit a huge goal in sales. Being able to take that same mindset into these things that are part of our normal life, like family. No, they don't. Like, it's like actually like setting goals. Like, I've got a goal this quarter of going on this many trips with my yep. kids or going and doing having this many dates with my wife this quarter. Yep. And then being able to keep track. Like, hey, yeah. we're two months into the quarter, and I said I was going to go on 13 dates, and I've only been on two. I gotta start dating. A guess lot. what? Like, guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> the date every night for the next yeah. So I mean, so in sales, you would look at that and go, guess what? I'm not gonna have any money in my bank yeah. account. So you can look at your relationship with mm-hmm. her and go, guess what? I'm not gonna have any blowjobs in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> no, but but yeah, you're gonna end up in the divorce line. Yeah. Like, like it's it's mm-hmm. gonna happen if you don't go all in on these things. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna look and. And I can just, I can show you if I don't do that time with the kids, mm-hmm. I will be a lonely father in 10 years. They will ever, have their own lives and they'll never connect with me. Do you ever feel like, because I've felt this way before, that it, it, you have all these different areas of your life and that it's almost like I can't be all in 100% in all of them. So like, which one can I, can I like ease off on this month or year or quarter or like do you ever think do you ever like think about like yeah, i can't so, i can't be tens in all of them you know like you're talking about prioritizing well, but like it's that justification is what gets you in trouble like that justification like, because like what you're going to do is you're going to treat you're yeah. going to treat you being a dad mm-hmm. with your daughter you're going to treat that as a necessary evil mm-hmm. as opposed to a priority yeah. and an investment that will pay mm-hmm. dividends for your whole life yeah. because i promise you when when many years from now mm-hmm. when you're laying on your deathbed you're yeah. not going to go God, man, I wish I'd spent less time with Arden and I'd spent <laughs> and I'd spent much more time on that Sales Wolf podcast <laughs> with Joseph. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, like and you see this a lot with salespeople since this is a sales podcast. Like you see it a lot with salespeople and their health and fitness. Like they're like, "Man, I am crushing it." In sales this month, but you got a forty-five they, inch waist. Yeah, but they haven't gone to, and you just find, like I've done that before, like because I mean, living on the road and selling on the road, like I have over the last three and a half years, like there was a period of time where like I can remember pulling into like a Wendy's drive-through, and as I'm ordering, literally treating it as a as though it was not treated, literally justifying it as a way of treating myself and for all the hard this, work you did because i just crushed it that week yeah. like i'm on a friday i'm headed back home man I'm, i don't need to eat great like i'm just gonna go like freaking order 20 dollars worth of wendy's and eat it all Holy the way you know, like something, something <laughs> stupid but like it's it was justified by the fact of like i'm winning here 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 and then this is just a way of like coasting i don't know like and i've had like my weight has fluctuated throughout sure. sales cycles of um, different. I mean, it's just it's justification of not going all in in these all areas. But um, but here's the thing, you you touched on something. We only have so much bandwidth. Sure. Okay. So people need to get really good at here's my bandwidth for work. Yeah. And here's the time I'm going to do it in. Yeah. And then I'm done. Mm-hmm. So I have enough bandwidth so I can take and go all in on personal. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I need to pause at least once a day. I got to pause and I've got to just be with me mm-hmm. and I've got to just not focus on anything. Mm-hmm. Because what it does is I then can shift gears. Do you normally do that during the podcast? I do. <laughs> 
<laughs> I normally do that when Luigi's following me with a camera, and I and I <laughs> and I don't come up with anything funny or good or meaningful, but it'll get better. <laughs> so. But I mean, you 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 you're able to take your foot because you can't focus on anything yeah. for 100 percent of your time. You yeah. have to go down, and then I can be I, when I get with my son, mm-hmm. I can be all in with him playing basketball or playing around. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Yeah, and there's a big difference between being present and being available. Yeah. With your family. There's a difference between being there and being available. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. For sure. Well, cool. Well, this is some important, uh, important stuff. I mean, because I don't think this entrepreneurial trend is going to die down any. I don't want it to. Any sooner. No, and it shouldn't. Look here, uh, I want but, people to do that. But just as Gary talks about, like when the market, the market's not going to be great forever. Nope. And when it starts to, um, when it starts to not be such a great economic environment for entrepreneurs. It'll be interesting to see what happens because this is that video, like that's what will happen. Like oh, when, yeah. when things start getting difficult and struggles start popping up every day, it'll be interesting to see who actually hangs in there and, and you'll see proves. The, you'll see the suicide rate go up again. Oh, yeah. Just like in 20, 2008, nine mm-hmm. and ten. Oh, yeah. Dude, the suicide rate was skyrocketing in yeah. business. Yeah, that's serious. It sucks. But that's what happens. If you tie all of your value up mm-hmm. in what you do for a living, if you tie all your value up in what you do for a living, and you're not investing in these other areas, look, we could lose a business tomorrow, mm-hmm. but I'm healthy. Yeah. I can build another one back. Yep. But if I lose this business and I had sacrificed my health for it, I had sacrificed my relationships for it, guess what? I, got nothing. I might think a lot longer about that gun sitting there. Mm-hmm. You know? It's true. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So don't do that shit, Tyler. I'm trying. <laughs> Man, try. That doesn't even, that, that only exists in the English all, language. I think we did a whole podcast on that. Hey, we did, didn't we? <laughs> we need to do another one on it. All right, guys. So that is episode 61 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Short one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some value out of it. Hope it, Hopefully somebody had an aha moment and um, is going to re- prioritize Absolutely. things in our life and uh, get that squared away because that's why we do this. So with that, I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. Oh.